walk with God in faith and don't try to do it alone. It has been the desire of God even at the creation of man, that man walks with him. That is why we saw God coming to Adam in the cool of the day for a walk. As recorded in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. The scriptures also recorded a host of other men and women, in the Bible who walked with God. Even in our time, there are also a number of men and women, who have walked and some still working with God. It is pertinent that we understand, what it means to walk with God, or what it takes to walk with God. Walking with God is beyond mere motion or movement. Of course, we know we cannot walk with God in terms of palpability, like in a physical person you can see. And hang hand together with him or her and walk. No, it is not so with God. Although God desires a similar relationship with his man, on the level of the spiritual connection, and concentration of our total faculty on him. The Bible captured it succinctly in the book of Joshua chapter 22 verse 5. It says, But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses the servant of the Lord charged you. To love the Lord your God, and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. That is succinctly what it means to walk with God. Because God is spirit. We can't walk with him hand in hand, as is possible with human friends or peers or couples. But through our spirit, we can relate with him in manners similar to those. But it takes focus, concentration, and consecration. Giving him all of your attention to the exclusion of distractions. Just like when two people that are connected are walking together. They are both obsessed with their talks, discussion, or gists. Sometimes to the point, that they are even oblivious, of what is happening in and around them. Walking with God first and foremost requires faith and love for God. That is why the Bible asked in Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can two walk together, except they be agreed? Without faith, you can't walk with God. Just the same way two people, who are not connected in any way, may not be able to make good companions or walk together. If they try it, you can imagine how frustrated both of them will become. Because there is no bond or things that bond them together. Even in a family, you can imagine what will happen when a husband, although walking with the wife, but with his attention or concentration elsewhere, or the wife having her concentration and focus elsewhere, although she is with her husband. It bleeds jealousy, resentment, quarrel, and loss of interest in a relationship. In fact, it can lead to a marital crisis. The failure of many marital relationships today is a result of ineffective communication or lack of attention from one to another. Now don't forget that Christianity is more of a relationship than a religion. And man was made in the image and likeness of God. Things that don't work for God, won't work for a man either. If lack of attention and interest, from one partner to another, can lead to a crisis or even the collapse of a marriage. How do you think, it can be possible to walk with God, without giving him attention, concentration, and love? We have many examples from the scriptures, those that walked with God, and how they did it and how they ended. Now don't forget that the scriptures, were written for our learning, correction, and reproof. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. For instance, we have the likes of these men, who walked with God, as confirmed in the scriptures. Abraham, Noah, Enoch, Moses, Joshua, David, Elijah, etc. While it is not all of them, the Bible strictly used the term, walk with God. But characteristically, by the scriptural parameters, they all exhibited the same, or similar traits termed as walk with God. For instance, the Bible says of Enoch, in Genesis chapter 5 verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And of Noah, the Bible says, in the book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. These are the generations of Noah, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. 
And we know how God saved Noah, and his family from the destruction by the flood, and he even became the progenitor of the generation after the flood. What about Enoch? God took him alive to heaven, without allowing him to taste or pass through the pains of death. From the foregoing, and many examples too numerous to be cited here, it is safe without a doubt to say that walking with God, is the key and license to ending well. Now how can one walk with God? As I have started explaining earlier. The Bible answers the question in the book of Joshua chapter 22 verse 5. As we have read earlier. Joshua chapter 22 verse 5. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses the servant of the Lord charged you. To love the Lord your God, and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Also in the book of Micah chapter 6 verse 8. The Bible says, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. So walking with God, is not a Herculean task, or a matter hidden in obscurity, classified information, or some coded communication preserved for a certain privileged few. No, it is not. For our God is the God of all. He does not prefer one over another without any cause. He doesn't give one a privilege, and deny it to another without a reason. His ways and principles are always open to every willing soul. For instance, in salvation, he throws it open to all. Without any form of discrimination based on race, tribe, gender, sex, age, or any other human basis of acceptance, rejection, or otherwise. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God's love is for the entirety of the world. After all, it is him that created the world and that is in it. He sends his only begotten Son, that whosoever that believes in him. The word whosoever is a term of universality, without any form of preference, or discrimination whatsoever. It is open for all, and with the same condition and destination for whosoever, that believes. That is who God is, and how God operates. So we can all take advantage of that, and walk with Him. And secure a glorious destiny for ourselves, our children, our households, and even the entire human race like Noah. Who God used and saved the life of all, both man and animals, as written in the book of Genesis chapter 7 from verses 15 to 16. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Genesis chapter 8 verses 1 to 2. And God remembered Noah, and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And in the case of Moses who pleaded to God, not to destroy the entire race of the children of Israel, when they sinned against him. In the book of Numbers chapter 14 verses 13 to 20. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou Lord art among this people. That thou Lord art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them, by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, Therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now, I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering, and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people, from Egypt even until now. And the Lord said, 
I have pardoned according to thy word. This pardon was at the instance of Moses, because he was working with God. The saving of the generation of Noah, was because Noah walked with God. That therefore goes to say, mean and confirm, that if we walk with God, we won't suffer shame, frustration, untimely death, and losses. Just as Moses, Noah, Enoch, Abraham, and Elijah did not suffer any of such. Just as the scripture has said in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So it will take us a walk with God, to gain all that God has promised his children. Walking with God has uncountable advantages. It adverts evil and unpalatable occurrences. It gives health and vitality. It gives bring victory. It can brings healing. It brings longevity and so on. So what can stop you from walking with God? So stop walking alone. Stop trying to do it alone. That is why you may have been failing. God wants to help you, and he has been waiting on you to ask for his help. He only requires your will and obedience. He says in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. That is all it takes to walk with God. Come with faith, come boldly without doubts. He is ever ready for you. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, King of Kings, we come unto you this hour, having discovered that we can't do it alone without you. Lord, we have returned to you to acknowledge this truth. Therefore dear Lord, forgive us for all the times we have attempted doing it without you. Now, dear Lord, we ask and seek your help and assistance. The arms of the flesh have failed us. Now dear Lord rescue us. Help us. Heal us. Deliver us. Secure us. Rescue our destinies. And help us to from now look up to you in faith, obedience, and in righteousness. These we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. We appreciate you immensely for joining us today to share the Word of God. We share the Word of God on this channel every week and you are invited to be one of us. Here is another video titled, Morning Prayer for Breakthrough. Carefully handpicked for you to watch next. Click on the video to watch now, for we know that it will enrich you immensely. Also, if you are new here, you may consider subscribing. And leave a comment in the comment box telling us you have subscribed. We will definitely respond to you immediately. God bless you.